Fox News sent some folks to the Reason Rally a couple of years back to make fun of atheists. And in some footage that I saw that Fox News didn't air, this guy from Fox who was interviewing people asked an atheist, if you die and you find yourself in front of God, what are you going to say to him to get him to let you into heaven? And that's one of the many reasons I wish I had gone to the Reason Rally. I would have loved to have been interviewed by that guy. Because my response would have been, well, let's say we're both wrong. What are you going to say to Allah to get him to let you into heaven? That's the central problem with Pascal's Wager, I think. Pascal's Wager is an argument used by apologists, but it's not really designed to prove that there's a God. It's designed to prove why you should believe that there's a God. Basically, it says, if there's no God, but you spent your life wrongly believing that there's a God, no big deal. However, if there is a God and you spent your life not believing in him, you have to pay the price for it in the afterlife. Therefore, you're better off erring on the side of caution and believing that there's a God. One problem, of course, is that even if you do decide to believe in a God, how can you be sure that you're believing in the right one? There are plenty of gods out there, many of whom want you to worship them and only them. It would be easier if you were allowed to worship all the gods at once, but apparently that's not allowed. There's also the problem of how you can make yourself believe in something that you don't naturally find convincing. How can you force yourself to believe in something simply because you think you'd be better off believing it? And even if you did somehow psychologically manipulate yourself into believing in God, wouldn't God see that as the cynical, calculated act that it is? Pascal says that if you just go through the motions of praying and going to church, eventually you will start to believe in God. But even if that's the case, how do you choose which God you're going to psychologically manipulate yourself into believing? Do you pick one at random? And would going through the motions of practicing a particular religion really convince you that it was true if you knew that you just picked it at random? Sometimes I hear Christians say, if you open your heart to Jesus, he will give you faith. Well, what if the same could happen if I open my heart to Allah or Vishnu or Odin? Wouldn't it be more fair if I just open my heart to all of the gods and see which one gave me the most faith? If there is no way to empirically demonstrate the truth of one religion above all the others before you die, then if you don't find any of them any more convincing than any of the others, there's no way to choose between one of the others before you die. Then, of course, after you die, it's too late to make that choice. Since these competing religious beliefs can't be proven until it's too late for believing in them to do you any good, then believing in one is no more useful than believing in any other. It's a crapshoot regardless of which religion you choose.